All right, joined now by the man who has been covering the U.S. Open every step of the way, writer for SNY.TV and founder of ZagsBlog.com, Adam Zagoria. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, Steve. How you doing? Thanks for coming in and talking a little U.S. Open. Sure. And listen, when we booked this, we thought to ourselves, all right, this is going to be, it's going to be a Serena night. We're going to talk about Serena, but it's not Absolutely. Serena. It's not. Okay, she gets bounced by an unseated woman. Um, it was an unseated versus the 26th seed in the women's final championship. Was this a missed opportunity for Serena, or was she right for the pick in this week? Well, look, I think, first of all, we should give credit to Flavia Panetta, who won the tournament today, and to Roberta Vinci, who beat Serena yesterday, two Italian players. You know, it was a great storyline. The two of them, the Italian prime minister, came in to watch them. But, of course, everyone was expecting this was going to be Serena. You and I thought it was going to be Serena. Um, look, I think she got a little tight there in the third set. She made some unforced errors. The pressure got to her, Steve. And she was playing a woman in Roberta Vinci who played the match of her life, uh, played a very smart match, changed up the pace, hit some drop shots, came to net, and I think gave Serena a different look than she had seen all tournament. I'm glad you brought up pressure because we saw with the Pats as they were attempting to go with an undefeated season, Kentucky Wildcats, uh, right. pressure can get to a team. Even someone as experienced as Serena Williams could pressure, is it actually a tangible thing? Could it really get to someone like her? Sure. I mean, I think, again, we have to keep in mind, she, came, she had come into this, she already had all four uh, major titles, which we call the Serena Slam. She uh, had won the U.S. Open the past three years. So she was telling everyone, and I think trying to convince herself, hey, there's no pressure. I don't feel the pressure. She said that the whole tournament coming into the tournament. There's no pressure on me. I already won Wimbledon. I already have all four majors. Her coach was quoted as saying, we don't want to talk about the Grand Slam because it's too much of a burden on her back. Um, but obviously there's pressure. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's asking her about it. And I think eventually it got to her and she did feel that yeah it just it didn't feel like she was telling us the truth there and I think that that's the one thing that we always like to hear we like to hear the truth and she's been battered with questions week after week of something like this she does not have the best relationship with the press does she uh, she was a little testy there last night when she came in you know the other night after she beat Venus uh, we were in there at about 1130 in the press room and an Italian reporter said you seem a little glum and quiet why is that and she frankly said I don't want to be here it's 1130 at night I don't want to be here talking to you guys um, so at least she was honest there and then after she lost to Vinci in the semis she her first you know, first statement was don't ask me about disappointment I don't want to talk about how disappointed I am don't ask me about pressure I don't want to talk about pressure. Um, so she can be a little testy, and I think she could have been a little more gracious with the media. Well, I mean, she's always been a polarizing character, certainly a polarizing figure. She's had some bad moments on the court. But I want to know why the fans love her so much. Is it simply because she's an American and she does win, or is it because we actually do see the real her out there? We see her showing that emotion. She's showing her vulnerability out there on the court. Yeah, I think you raised some good points. I mean, first of all, Steve, she is an American. We should point out no American man has won a Grand Slam since 2003. So the men are domi dominated by Europeans. So she's an American. She's one of us. Everyone knows the story of her and her sister being raised on public courts in Compton by their father. It's an incredible, truly American story. Um, and also, like you say, she does wear her emotions on her sleeve. People have grown up with her since the time she and her sister were teenagers. Now they're in their 30s. We know their story very well. And she is very expressive. She's, she lets us in you see when she's frustrated she yells she screams when she's fired up she says come on so she lets her emotions you know air out in public and I think people respond to that well, I mean and that might be counter to the etiquette of tennis but this is a new world this is a world of reality television where we see truth where we see honesty and we do see kind of like the honest the real Serena out there on the court don't you think yeah and if you compare and contrast her to say Steffi Graf who won the Grand Slam the last person to win it before Serena she's German she was very close. You never knew what she was thinking or feeling. She was more like a machine. Um, even a guy like Roger Federer, who everyone respects and you know is a, has a huge following in, among the tennis fans, doesn't really show too much emotion out there on the court. So I think the fact that Serena does allows people to respond. And listen to the way we've been talking about her, Serena. One name athletes. They are rare. Tiger, Michael. I mean. 
it's not easy to find these one name athletes and she has certainly become a household name. Some say that she is the best women's tennis player of all time. Are we too close to this? Are we too biased right now to believe that she is the best? Absolutely not. I think she's the greatest player ever. Chrissy Everett and Martina Navratilova, two of the greatest players ever, are both on record saying Serena is the best ever. You know, I'll take their word for it. And just the combination of the power, the serve, the speed, her smarts on the court. She's got 21 majors now. She's still going to win a couple more. And if you look at what she's done, Steve, after the age of 30, she won eight majors and counting, which is many, as, as many as guys like Jimmy Connors, Agassi, and Yvonne Lendl won in their whole careers. Yeah, and, and she's 30, she will be 34 in the next couple of weeks here yeah. she's not going away she says she is not leaving but the talent level of women's tennis is on the uptick it's on the rise they're coming the young ones are coming right now how many more years does she have left well I think she can dominate for another two years or so if she wants to she wants to play at least through the Olympics in Rio in, in 2016 so that's another year I think she could easily win two three majors next year I mean Djokovic said she'd be the favorite to win the Grand Slam again next year and if you look at her she doesn't really have any true rivals Chrissy and Martina had each other Ma Steffi and Monica had each other Serena doesn't really have a rival now and these other people like Simona Halep uh, uh, who is number two in the world has never won a Grand Slam. Cheryl Pova's hurt. Even uh, Flavia Panetta, who won the U.S. Open, is retiring. That's it, right. So who is going to beat Serena consistently? Nobody. At least not in the next couple of years. It doesn't seem like she no. has a challenger. No. I mean, considering how good she is, it really is amazing. Yeah, it'll be interesting. She's at 21 majors now. It'll be interesting to see how many more she gets. The record is 24. Real quick, men's final tomorrow, Federer, Djokovic. You're excited about this one, aren't you? I'm excited. I mean, it, this is, you know, arguably the greatest player of all time, Roger Federer, trying to win his 18th major of all time, his first since Wimbledon in 2012 against Novak Djokovic, a guy who's moving up the list of the greatest players of all time, could win his 10th major. Um, Novak beat Roger in the Wimbledon final in four sets. Roger beat Novak in Cincinnati in two out of three last month. So it should be a great match, and there really is a lot on the line here always look forward to reading your reports and we will be talking to you when college basketball season comes around as well uh, you can read his stuff at zagsblog.com adam zagoria great to see you thanks for coming in man thanks buddy good job